Okay, I am down here. I am basically at Franklin Park. If you see all this traffic here, now this, this is about 8.30 at night right now. Now, this is pretty much still rush hour because people are still trying to get home from work and everything. So, as you can see, you got buses, cars, you have this lane right here that's being blocked. So they're turning three lanes down to one lane. And to show you how the city does not like to plan things accordingly, this is the city of Boston, right in uh, right in Dorchester. Now, there's no, there's no need to have all this traffic backed up like this down the one lane when people are trying to get home. And all you gotta do is Plan your scheduling accordingly. So we're gonna walk down here and I'm gonna show you exactly what's going on. Like, look at this. All this traffic. Traffic that's being blocked. All down there. And you can barely get through Columbia Road because of that reason. So when you get down here, you can see how the light is green but the cars can't go anywhere because it's all bottlenecked up. And it's like literally no reason at all other than them trying to paint lines on the street. So they're trying to paint lines on the street which is not the good time to do it right now. See, they're trying to do that, trying to do the crosswalk. So they come down here, you got like three police officers, and none of them are directing traffic. They're all just standing there talking. I'm pretty sure somebody's getting paid to do a detail. Look at that. Somebody's blocking the intersection there. Two cars are blocking the intersection. When you get down here, what do you have down here? Look like three cruisers blocking traffic, doing nothing. Let's see what they're doing. Look at that. You can't even use the bus stop. How's this lady supposed to use the bus stop with these three cars? Let's see what they're talking about. So, they're right there. And, how you doing? Traffic is pretty much there. You get that. How you doing? Hi. So, let's see what they're doing. They're just gonna block traffic all day. That's what it looks like, so. We'll do a First Amendment audit right here and see what's going on. How many guys did it take to block traffic? So as you can see, then you have Why would you block traffic? Now, she's got to walk over all the way there to get to the bus. That does, that's not even... Bus stop is here. There, but these guys are here. So you got two sergeants and some other guy. All... Just talking. Not even directing traffic. So, taxpayer dollars are going to pay, pay these guys to do anything. Nothing at all. Pretty much nothing. Not one person directing traffic at that intersection there where they should be. That's a very critical intersection and it should be down there. Oh, that whole street is blocked all the way down. So, I'm gonna walk down the street and see. See what you have. Look at that, a cup of coffee. Why would you put a cup of coffee on your car? And, and leave it there and when you get down here so this 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 is this is how they put lines on the street in the middle of rush hour so all the way down to the next red light cars cannot go anywhere so that light turns that light turns green and if you got two offices fair to say one should be at either intersection or else you don't need two offices 
you know, why else would you have two offices not to be in the same spot? I would hope not. So, when we get all the way down here, we're gonna see like how much of a stretch of traffic that is being blocked up just to make lines. Like you could do this on the overnight shift. I, I don't see why would you pick 8.30 in the afternoon to do that. So we, as far as you can see all the way down to all the way down to the end. All the way down to the end. Now this is this this right here, the street that I'm on right now is uh, Blue Hill Ave, right by Franklin Park. If you, and when you get down there, you're at Merrick Highway in Blue Hill. But fair to say, all this road right here that's all being blocked, it's being blocked for no reason. There's nobody putting lines down anywhere. There's no trucks. As you can see, there's no trucks anywhere putting lines down. So. This road is totally blocked off for no reason. No reason at all. No reason at all. Look at that. The bus just knocked over two cones, three cones. Just knocked those cones over. Maybe they're too close to the road. Now, as far as you can look, all the way down. There's no... Um, there's no, uh, there's no reason why they should have this blocked off like this. Yeah. People trying to get home from work. People are tired. This is one less thing you need to have in the city. Look, it doesn't make sense. No work being done. So I wonder how long will they be out here just doing, just talking, basically talking. They're not working. They're getting paid for just standing, drinking coffee. Hey, that's what they do for a living. I can do that. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure you guys can do that too. But look, I was on my way coming from a job and I just happened to see this. And the reason why it caught my attention because I was stuck in that traffic going down come back an hour later and the traffic's still the same way so this is 7.30 now it's 8.30 close to 9 but it's the same way why would you have this whole road blocked off when people are trying to get home and it's, it's a given that the city of Boston needs a lot of improvement need the right people in leadership look at that that's on the ground so that's one of those, those measures rollers you roll it and it tells you how many feet how many yards you went so <laughs> that's on the ground and it can't be working too well that looks like a personal vehicle to me it's like a personal vehicle so now I see one guy just standing there. He's not putting out any lines or anything. Just standing there with a cell phone in his hand. So let's see if he uh, if he's gonna do anything important here, other than just block the whole the whole road. How you doing? How you doing, man? All right. Do you need help with anything? No, just watching. Oh, cool. Yeah. I don't think I need help. To watch what's going on but this it is now why would he, I need help from him I don't know why would I need help from him but that's a weird question how often you walk up to perfect stranger and ask him to need help that's nobody matter of fact nobody does that like why would you walk up to a perfect stranger that you don't know and ask him for help that's beyond me. I gotta look at that one up. There must be a reason why people ask you for help. I don't look like I'm in distress or anything. I'm not laying on the ground. I'm not in any kind of 
shape that I shouldn't be in. I hope not. So. And then once again, that intersection is blocked. The intersection is blocked. There's no. What's happening? How you doing, buddy? Working hard today? What, are we doing the job? Uh, a little bit of everything. Uh, I guess I'm going to make that go right to there. That's supposed to be the new ADA approved ramps. According to the ADA, those ramps cannot be more than a 33 degree pitch. If it's more than a 30, I believe it's 33 degrees. But I check it, I, I'm pretty sure it's 33 degrees. If it's any more than that, then it's not really ADA approved. And it has to be at least 48 inches wide, so it looks like it's approved. Everything nowadays. Any, anything and everything that you do as far as building and structure should be ADA approved because you know you want to go for the disability and if we can't look out for them who will so Riley's, you get the Riley brothers over there. They do a lot of construction in the city as well. purpose of doing a detail is like what are they there there for but I would like to contact the mayor and the commissioner one day and ask him like what's the job description of an officer on a detail like what is he supposed to do is he supposed to just sit there and watch traffic or should he kind of help along the traffic when he's impeding the traffic because you know what's going to happen is these cars are going to block the intersection and then when it's like turns green, the cars that are coming from here won't be able to move. That's usually what's going to happen. So right now that light's turning yellow, then red. So now it's red. Now these cars can't go anywhere. They're just going to sit there. They're going to sit there because there's nowhere to go. They're, they're going to go that way, but there's really nowhere for them to go. So... I don't know if they teach that in the academy how to direct traffic, but they should because these cars are trying to all get into one lane, which is very difficult. And it's not it's not easy. Everybody's trying to get into one lane at the same time, and these cars are trying to go at the same time. So it's it's tough. It's really tough. So this is what you have as far as traffic goes. As far as you know. I think if uh, if they would have made this on a different time frame, it would help with the traffic a lot better. I th I think you have to st study the city, know the demographics of the city, and then go from there. Like you know, it's not that hard to figure out. 
all you gotta do is just, you know, one day take a look, see what's going on in the city, you know, what's the traffic volume at, what time it is, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out, I don't, I don't have to go to MIT to, to figure this out, I don't have to go to Harvard, and, so, like they're gonna block this traffic up, like, all, for quite a while, doing, Little, little of nothing. They're just gonna stand there and just block traffic. They're not even ready to put the lines down. Just so, like you know, the truck that puts the lines down, that that, that or that would be putting the lines down, is right over there. If you can see it from here, but that truck's been sitting there for like the last two hours. I don't know if he's gonna wait. No, he got plenty of paint, so he's not waiting for paint. He's got plenty of paint. It's not, it's not paint. So, maybe maybe it's coffee break time? I, I'm not sure. I couldn't tell you. But, if you see, traffic is still backed up over there. And it's been like that for the last couple of hours. Traffic just being backed up. And the reason why it's backed up because the volume is decreasing to one, one lane. So... Anybody has have any suggestions on what they should do? Call three one one if you're in the city of Boston. That's the new mayor's hotline. Or if you're calling from a regular phone, you will call six one seven six three five forty five hundred or six six one seven six three five four thousand. Those are two numbers you can reach the city of Boston, the mayor's office, or whatever have you. Just ask him, say, why, why is, uh, why is your construction or subcontractors mocking lines on the street when it's nearly, uh, right in the middle of rush hour? Matter of fact, I heard something on the news today that rush hour was getting almost an accident right there. I don't know if you've seen that, but almost an accident. That's why the detail officer should be there, because... If he's not directing traffic, look what he's causing. Cars are going, to, cars are going against the light, and that's the reason why the detail should be. Because in reality, if you're obstructing traffic, you should be making it a safe area. Don't obstruct traffic and not make it a safe area. So, you know, I know I'm pretty sure OSHA has regulations behind that too. If you're gonna decrease the flow of traffic, you must make the area visible and safe at all times. Um, there's no detail officer over there. There should be somebody down there. Technically, you should have a detail officer there at that intersection at the end, which is Columbia Road and Blue Hill. You should have one right here. I believe this is Columbia Road and um, uh, Franklin Park. But they should have them there. They're not. What's up, man? Oh, they're trying to paint the lines on the street, but they're blocking all the traffic. You can't even get by. Like they've been doing that for like two hours now. They ain't doing nothing. All right, my man, take care. Some of the boys from uh, Franklin Field. They just, just blocking traffic. No, no detail officer. He, sh he should be directing traffic, and he's not. And the, the people can't even get to the bus stop because they gotta get dropped up in the middle of the street. And so, like, why would you do that at this time of night? It doesn't make any sense. They've been here for three hours doing the same thing. These two guys standing in the middle of the street, not even directing any traffic. Unbelievable. Like, you know, you, you pay these guys a good salary. Some of these guys are making hundred, twenty, hundred fifty thousand dollars a year doing nothing. Like, come on, I can do this. The time that I'm out here, I could probably direct traffic better than them. Look, look at this. You, you can't make this stuff up, guys. The car, like, sitting right there. I don't know why he's that far back there. Light is green, and he's still back there. Who knows why. I can guarantee you an accident can definitely happen here if someone's not paying attention. The car with one, one light right there. That should be checked out. But um, 
I understand they want to get the crosswalks done, but there's a reasonable time to do that. Like, you don't have to do it, like, right now. If you came here at 10 o'clock at night, I'm pretty sure this traffic would be a lot lighter than it is right now. Almost positive it would be. Um, and because the buses are not picking up the people at the stop, and they have to cross three lanes, there should be a T inspector there, just to make sure everybody gets on that bus safe. There should be some kind of inspector there because they're not at their designated stop. Technically, they're 20 yards away from their stop. So, that's, that could be a issue. This guy's more fascinated by hooking up his lights. Like he bought a new light bar that he's trying to connect. It's not that easy to connect those things, by the way. They run off a 12 volt DC black and red wire. Black being the negative, red being the positive. It's not that hard to figure out. Another bus right here. Let's see how this bus does. If he if he has to pick somebody up or, or drop them off. still trying to get the pattern of these lights working right he's still been messing with it for a little while now I don't know if you guys noticed that but he's he's playing with his, his flasher box back there trying to get those lights to do whatever he wants them to do and they have multiple flash patterns so he's trying to trying to see what he can do with that see the traffic just doesn't stop what time is it now I think it's like 8 let me see what time it is Looks like it's nine. Looks like it's nine twenty-three. I have to double check. Let me see if I can get something with some valid time on it. No, actually, it's nine oh nine. Sorry about that, guys. Nine oh nine. This is, you know, rush hour usually takes doesn't it taper down to like maybe ten ten thirty. That's when the traffic pretty much dies down a little bit less than this. But now everybody's like some people work late, you know, people coming home from school, whatnot. There's all the things they're doing. But this kind of traffic, it'll take you an extra half an hour to 45 minutes to get home with this kind of traffic. Because you're turning three lanes into one, which is very difficult. Not to mention that both bus stops, you cannot get on the bus. You have to get on the bus in the middle of the street, which creates an unsafe area for the passengers as well as the bus driver himself. And you, I don't know if you guys noticed this or not, but there's two sergeants working. So if you have two sergeants, use the construction detail that says two sergeants if you have like four officers. So usually every two officers you might have one sergeant, something like that. I'm not sure the exact pattern, but it's somewhere around those area. So if you got one sergeant, you should have two officers per one sergeant. Uh, these guys may not stop painting until like, who knows how long. I'm not going to stick around that long to find out, but I just wanted to get this footage before I went home. Wherever home is. So now you got the, that light is red, and you got that light. Cars are going against that light because they can't go anywhere. So the detail officer should be doing it. If if I was a detail officer and I was doing this traffic, I tell you what I'd be doing. I'd be standing with my vest on in the middle of this intersection, right at the right at the middle where those cones break into the middle of the street. I'll be potting the traffic coming off this street here, but I'll be allowing these cars to go, but stopping them before that light catches on them. But you know, it's it's it's, it's a shame that people got to go through all this to get home, and what could have been just a five-minute drive turns into like a 25, 30-minute drive. Normally, you could take this turn on red 
because there is no sign that says no turn on red but the way this is set up you can't even do that now luckily there's not that many cars coming from Franklin Park area there are cars but not as many that's coming this way it only creates a more unsafe area now this light's green so cars making this right can't really go anywhere they, are, they can barely move at this point so you should have an officer pulling traffic at the other end way down there just to keep this traffic opened up you know whenever he gets a chance he should be pulling the traffic down that way but it's it is what it is I'm gonna get a little bit more footage of this, then I'm gonna head out of here. But I just want you guys to get an idea, like, what's going on. I live in Boston all my life, and I, it gets worse and worse. This is supposed to be, like, what they call one of those, um, like a city where tourists will go to. If I was a tourist, I don't, tourist, I don't think I would go here. Because it's not too much to really do or see so it looks like there's a, a truck down there I can't make up what that truck is I'll walk down and see if I can see what kind of truck that is all the way down that's it water? oh no thanks appreciate it though right here there's a truck there but I don't know what that truck is doing as you can see you know, there's a lot of light so I can't get that sign but that sign says 14 Rosendale Square 22 Ashmont Station 28 Mattapan Station 29 Mattapan Station no stopping $100 fine tow zone so that's basically a, oh, you, maybe you can see it like that a little bit that's all the buses that come to this route. So you got four buses that come down this route. And it says share the road. I don't know how you're going to share the road. I don't know how would you share the road. So looks like they're going to try to try to do something here. And I see what he's gonna do, he's gonna snap a, is that a chalk line? I can't tell if that's a chalk line or not. It looks like it's a chalk line. Could be a chalk line. So he's gonna get the measurements. Yeah. Once he gets the, once he gets the measurements, cause you, you do gotta get these lines as best as you possibly can get them. And I think the average lane is about 10 feet wide. So, and you just got to kind of measure it out pretty good. You want it wide enough for a truck to fit through. So, At this point, this technology, you should be able to do that with a laser. It should be a lot easier if you had a laser, but that is a long stretch, so the laser might not work efficient. Well, maybe it would. Yeah, it's at nighttime, so yeah. Because in the daytime, it would be a little difficult. Trying to get this straight is usually not that easy, but you want to make sure that you don't deviate because if you deviate, then the lane is going to narrow. So you want to get a good idea of exactly how you want to do it. And if you have a straight road, which they do, you can measure 10 feet off the curb. 
in dif different segments to make sure the road is straight enough. Um, okay. Those cones keep getting knocked down because it's it's very little room on that side. If you're driving a big vehicle, it's very little room on that side. <laughs> like nothing, you can't get it through. But they're not hugging the curb tight enough to get through there. And that's a lot of paint that's going to be used on this road. That's a lot of paint. So he's basically is throwing a line over there. Um, let's see. So that's the. You got two reference points right there, which one of these is going to be the bike lane. So I think off of that is going to be a bike lane. It should be a bike lane there, but maybe not. See the traffic is through. So we, 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 I've been here about 32 minutes, and the traffic still hasn't let up. As you can see, every time a bus goes by, he knocks off, off one of those cones. Because you know that road is pretty narrow. He almost hit that one too. He's gonna keep knocking them down because the buses, those buses are pretty wide. 